All right, hi, this is Bill with uh, Succinct Research. A couple of uh, days ago, one of my friends, an old colleague of mine, emailed me and she wanted to know if there was a quick and dirty way that she could figure out how many, or approximately how many, historical buildings were in her project area. So she's working in a city and uh, she's working under Section 106 of the NHPA. So those are the criteria. She's looking for buildings that are more than 50 years old that have the seven um, elements of uh, integrity and then later on she can do the research and figure out if they actually uh, uh, meet any of the four criteria A, B, C, and D. So um, I told her real fast that she needs to get her um, project area created as a KMZ file which is one of my favorite things to, uh, to have and then um, she can add it to the Google Earth app on her phone. So I'm just going to go really quickly through the way that I use Google Earth and uh, other real estate search engines to identify um, possibly historical buildings in my project areas. So I'm just going to use this data that I have for um, the River Street project that I'm doing uh, as part of my dissertation. There's going to be a field school coming up this summer. So I've created these KMZ files of the approximate neighborhood boundary um, based on uh, what people who used to live there say. And so um, you can tell that it's a KMZ file. Let me widen this a little bit more. KMZ. And that's something that you can open up. You can have it emailed to you. You can open it up in your phone or save it uh, to uh, my places in um, Google Earth. And that gives you the project area. All right, so we've got this open. Now, um, this is just a hypothetical thing. If I had this blue part as my polygon, my project area, I'd want to look at the uh, entire parcel and maybe see if I can figure out some clues on how it's changed over time. So one of the things that strikes me uh, about this whole area is um, you've got a lot of really big buildings in here mixed with areas that look like they have smaller buildings. So um, I know this area pretty well and I know that it started off as a residential neighborhood a long time ago and then they built a lot of these newer buildings in there so you know these newer buildings probably were built on top of older ones possibly uh, destroying historic buildings but creating archaeological sites in the process and then the other thing that I notice is these big swaths of parking lots open lots um, these cap archaeological features, you know, like trash middens, building foundations, um, other things that might have been created historically. So they're actually kind of a good thing to see that, you know, if you have older maps and go deeper into detail and see that there used to be buildings in there, then that's where you're going to want to check out for historical uh, artifacts. All right, we'll go down in here into a zone where I know there's older buildings. All right, and I'll turn off my project area layer. Okay, so just looking at this from Google Earth, I can see several things. Like, first of all, I see the street names. Now, a lot of times, I'm, I'm doing this with a lot of understanding in this neighborhood, but a lot of times we're doing these projects and we don't have any idea where we're at in the world. And so uh, knowing the street names, that really actually helps. And I can see, um, you know, these smaller buildings, they're, they're houses, they look like houses with bigger stuff that probably was built on top of uh, older smaller ones we can see that there's you know some some uh, development going on with open lots open lot this open grassy area more open lots these open lots you know it looks to me like they removed older historical buildings and then they you know they're waiting to develop them into something else one thing I noticed that's really interesting is um, in this grass you can see that it's brown right here and then it's greener in certain spots that might be telling us that there were building foundations or other stuff underneath here that um, we might want to look at. The differential in the screen suggests that there was, you know, a building right there, a building there, probably a building right here. So already those things are giving us a lot of clues about change in this neighborhood since it was first created. But my friend wants to know about historical buildings. So um, one way you can figure out the age of buildings really easy is by going to a website like Trulia that shows you um, it shows you uh, buildings uh, where you're trying to go. So I'm just going to put in Boise because I know the place that I'm looking at on this Google Earth 
uh, file is in Boise, Idaho. Now, uh, Trulia is not designed for you to find historical buildings, but it gives you a lot of information about um, the development of certain areas, and it can it can show you a change over time as far as like you know what when buildings were built. Now, uh, if you knew the the cross streets, you can type them here in this browser, and then that'll take you to it. But since I already know Boise so well, I can just navigate right to approximately the location that I want to be at. We'll zoom on in here a little bit. Now we're looking for Lee Street and Ash Street, and uh, here we go. Okay, so here's our the zone that we're looking at back here. Google Earth, Lee Street, Ash Street. This is what it looks like in Google Earth. Here's what it looks like in Trulia. Now the cool thing about Trulia is it shows you uh, information about these buildings. Of course, they've got a satellite layer that's basically Google Earth. But they show us things like this. 1117 Lee, a 600 square foot house with one bathroom. Two bedroom with a 900 square foot with one bathroom. Two bedroom, 900. Okay, so those, those 600 and 1,000 square foot range, that's the range of historical houses. We didn't start building huge houses until, you know, the uh, after we started suburbanizing our country. So that gives you an idea of, um, you know, that these are, they're the, consistent of the size of historical buildings. Okay, let's go, let's check out one of these. Now here's where it really gets good with uh, Google Earth. 1121 Lee Street, we see this house looks like it's in pretty good shape. It looks like it's a historical house. Now we can view the details, and when we view the details, you know, you get a better picture of it. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. It's got this early 1900s decoration right up top. You know, that's like a, a hint for me right away. And then here's where we see it right there. Built 1905. Okay, it's more than 100, and it's about 110 years old, right? So we know it, it's about its approximate size, 105, 1905. Okay, that that's older than 50 years for sure. But let's do a um, let's do a little bit closer inspection of this. We'll copy its address, toss it into our old Google Earth. All right. Now knowing the location of this place is important because we can take our little man and check out the neighborhood. So we know it fits the 50-year criteria. Now we're just looking at materials, workmanship, feeling, location, the other elements of integrity for the NRHP. Okay, so here's our here's our house. And you can look, man, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. You know, the paint's pretty good on it. It's got this crazy gingerbread front or whatever this uh, decorative thing is. I don't know the name of that element, but I do know that it's early 1900s. This is early 1900s. Okay, so this thing looks like it's in kind of the shape that it was in when it was created 100 years ago. Now, if you're going to look at setting, you want to know what are the other houses near it look like. Okay, well, you know, this one looks like it's historical. This looks pretty historical. This one looks like it's historical. Uh, let me see. Let's get past this little tree here. Oh, yeah, that looks historical. So we've got several houses in a row that all look like they have all the same design and uh, worksmanship as they did when they were built. That's pretty good for you know historical, a historical setting. Now across the street, oh well, you know that's not historical yet, but that's not a that's not a deal breaker for it being a historical home. Um, those look like they were built in the 80s. They're definitely bigger. They're apartment buildings, and we're in a neighborhood that is single, uh, detached single-family dwellings. Okay, we go down the street a little bit. Oh, that that one looks nice and you know historical. This part might be historical. This part might be added on, but you know, just getting a glimpse at it, it looks like you know most of this street is in pretty good shape, as far as uh, setting. Uh, let me move over a little bit. 
All right, now that one, that looks like it's the same era. That looks like the same era. Okay, so we've got these 600 and 1,000 square foot buildings. One of them is uh, older. This trailer does not look old, but it definitely looks older than, it looks like it's, you know, 50 years at least. So that might actually be historical for some other reason. Um, now, all right, you've got several buildings in this area that look like they have the um, workmanship design and location of you know historical buildings okay so that gives you a really good clue now she wanted to know if there was any historical buildings you can't really tell that till you go there but you can see there's some that are in pretty good shape then the second question was how many does she have so once again just using this hypothetical project area here's our blue in this area right here you know we've got one two three four five I don't know about this one, 6, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 12. You've got 12 buildings that look like they're 1900. Um, you've got a lot back here. This lot might have Criterion D archaeology. You might be able to get data. Looks like right in here you might have data. You might have a house that might be data. I know this house is old. This is, uh, this is the Irma Heyman house. It's, it's old enough. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, or 12. You've got 12 buildings on the one street. That's how many forms you might have to fill out. Okay, we'll, we'll look along here a little bit more. These all look big and new. This looks like a new thing. This is new. Uh, but okay, so you've got a couple more isolates down here. These, these might, you might have to fill forms out for that. You might have to fill out forms for these. You might have to fill out forms for a couple of these. Maybe right there. Maybe these ones. Right in there. Um, and then right in here, you might want to look for artifacts, historical stuff in these lots. Looks like there's a couple buildings right here. So, you know, just off the top of my head, I could say you probably would end up having to fill out 20 forms, 30 forms. Um, so then it's up to you you know uh, if you want to get an architectural historian involved I mean it looks like there's several buildings that are older than a hundred years old and in a town like Boise that's really significant um, anywhere in the United States a 1900s building you're gonna want to try to figure a little bit more about it now this is just showing you know this work on Trulia and uh, Google Earth is just showing um, a rough idea of these buildings and maybe that they might be historical uh, you're going to have to do more research to figure out if they fit any of the four criteria under the NH NRHP, um, A, B, C, or D. Uh, just based on that, there's there's probably some potential for D just looking at the way things are, but you know the top layers of this may be disturbed and, and the artifacts may not be in context. And also those buildings might not be attached to anything that's significant for the city. There could be, you know, uh, another district of the same exact buildings right here and then without their setting and without their feel together feeling um, they might not be considered historical but that's a good idea that's this is an easy way that you can figure out if you have historical buildings in your area um, just using Trulia or one of the, or Zillow or one of the other uh, real estate search engines and mixing that up with the information on Google Earth uh, you can get a pretty good idea on if there's any uh, historical archaeology there or anything that you might need to fill out forms for. So that's what I do. This is just a quick and dirty lesson. Um, please feel free to email me or contact me if you have any more questions about this or if you uh, have anything to add. You know, I'm always, I'm always open to criticism. It's Bill White with Succinct Research. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care.